So now we uh, will explain a little bit what are the effects of drying. When we do drying, the first objective is to reduce moisture actually to reduce water activity. When we reduce water activity, the food, so this one is water activity, this one is re relative rate, I mean how fast the changes will occur. When we do drying, we reduce water activity. We will influence the activities of microorganisms. The first group of microorganisms we inhibit is bacteria, and then yeast, and then mold. So mold, when we compare the three groups, we already discussed in chapter 5, then mold can grow at lower water activity. But however, this poisic is the critical value. Below this water activity, we can consider no microbial growth. Not any group can grow. So in terms of other reaction like chemical reaction, non-enzymatic browning, including Maya reaction, caramelization. And then this curve also illustrates for enzyme activity, enzymatic reaction. Okay. The loss of lysine, lysine and essential amino acids can be lose by heating, for example. Okay, so these changes follow this curve. So you have like this. Here you have a maximum. So normally this reaction occur need water, need the availability of water to occur. So when water activity is high, the rate is maximum. However, if you have more water, then the rate is a little bit reduced. This is because we call dilution effect. Dilution means that when you have more than enough water, the reactants are diluted. They are farther, further from each other. They cannot collide easily anymore. So somehow the rate of reaction is a little bit below. And to the left side, when you have low water activity means water is no more available. It's no more for reaction. And then up to here, all this reaction will no longer occur. If you look at oxidation of food, oxidation is like this, and it can somehow like this, if you draw further. Here, you also have dilution effect. This is a uh, optimal water activity for oxidation. Oxidation then is oxygen and, and, and vapor and water. This is oxidation. And here you have is a lowest somewhere here. The minimum means that this at this water activity, the food is protected very well. But here is a bit strange that if you even further remove all water, then the rate of oxidation is increased a lot. And it's easy to be oxidized. To explain this, you have a food component and first you have one layer of water, a layer of one molecule of water, this is called monolayer. Monolayer water. The first layer of water which surround the food component, strongly bound to the food component, protect the food component. And then, a little bit outside, you have several layers of water. This is called multi-layer. Multi-layer water, which also bind somehow to the food component but not strongly anymore and further outside when the water is far away from the food component then this is free water when you do drying and you reduce water activity up to this point up to the mono layer somewhere here is mono layer then this layer of water will protect the food component, will prevent the oxidation. But when you further reduce this and there is no more protection of water, then actually the food component is exposure a lot to oxygen in the air. And even vapor in the air can also reach easily. So the oxidation becomes faster. This you can observe in like fry roasted. Roasted nuts, peanuts, for example, or dry one or fry one. Fry nuts, roasted nuts. For example, when you roast peanuts, 
and you put in a bag and you hang them under the light of the sun they oxidize very fast okay uh, this one we observed before already that we have three group of microorganisms most of bacteria cannot grow anymore most of spoilage when the water activity is below 0.9 and yeast 0.88 more 0.80 but you have three exception group halophilic bacteria which love to live at high salt concentration serophilic mold the mold which love to live at in dry condition Osmophilic yeast, the yeast love to live at high osmotic pressure in high sugar concentration, for example. Then they can grow at this minimum value of water activity much lower than the general groups. But however, the critical water activity is 0.6. Below that, no microbial growth occur. And here you see this is the these are the minimum water activity for this pathogen to grow, so on. So it's easier to inhibit bacteria than yeast and mold in terms of dry products. So when you look at the cell light of dry meat, dry product, in terms of microbial changes, so you should pay attention on the mold and the yeast rather than bacteria because when the food is dry no risk of bacterial growth this is a summary as well if you look at these two parameters of food ph and water activity when water activity is low when ph is low then we have a stable range mean the food will be stable will not be spoiled fast but if you have this range, high pH in combination with high water activity, then the food gets spoiled fast. Drying is applied to make a certain meat products, like what do you have here? Dry beef. This is um, dry beef in the countryside. Then here you have uh, dry fermented sausages. These are the sausages made in with drying, fermentation and drying. And here, this is um, lapsu, okay? It's very popular meat products in Vietnam, which is also dried. Part of the procedure is for drying. Yes, and we already finished chapter 13 about drying. Do you have a question? To summarize this chapter, why do we need to do drying? To lower the water activity, so to extend the cell life also improve sensorial quality diversify product reduce the cost combustion and storage when we do normal dry in then we remove water by evaporation but there is one type of drying we remove by sublimation what is that method of drying what is the method of drying that we remove water by sublimation free drying Okay, what are the driving force of drying? There's two driving force, the different in temperature and the different in vapor pressure, right? Vapor pressure of food is water activity. Vapor pressure of the air is relative humidity. Just two driving forces. So if you increase a lot of temperature, if, if you don't have this, you cannot dry. But if you increase a lot of this, the temperature is low, you can still dry. So this is even more important than time writer, right? Okay, so what is principle heat pump drying? That beside normal drying chamber, heating system and so on, what do you need? A refrigerator to condensate vapor from the air, to make air drier so you can dry faster. You can dry faster, even you can dry at low temperature. This method is good or not good in terms of sensorial and nutritional quality? Good. In a way that you can dry for a shorter time. In a way that you can dry at lower temperature. Then you have good sensorial quality, good nutritional value. And then the effects of drying, when we reduce water activity, then we change microbial changes we change enzymatical reaction 
chemical reaction. In chemical reaction, there's one specific reaction that we have to all the time pay attention is oxidation. Is it good to remove all water to prevent oxidation? No. For oxidation, you should leave a monolayer of water to protect the food. If you remove all, even you increase the oxidation.